Now, young adults who leave the nest only to come right back home again. News Hour economics correspondent Paul Salman looks at what's behind that growing trend. It's part of his regular reporting, Making Sense of Financial News. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm Naomi. Nice, nice to meet you. The Schaefer residence in Newton, Massachusetts, outside Boston. Fraternal twins Becky and Naomi both went away to college in Canada, graduated last year, both work part-time, and both are so-called boomerang kids, back home with their parents. Can you tell us a little bit about what your high school friends are doing now? Are many of them back yeah, in Newton as well? Um, most of them are. I would say that only one of our high school friends, or two, one or two of them, have really gotten good full-time jobs. The fifth person in the Schaefer's kitchen? Sociologist and Johns Hopkins dean Catherine Newman, demonstrating her field work skills. I didn't want to move somewhere random. I kind of wish I did it. Not that I don't love living at home, but... Why do you say that? I just feel like when I first moved home, I, I was like, okay, Becky, like six months, and then you're like not going to be here anymore. You're going to move out. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit complacent. The Schaefer's could have sprung straight from Newman's new book, the Accordion Family, which chronicles a worldwide trend that's reversing what we used to think normal. In my generation, if you didn't leave home at 18, there was something really wrong with you. This phenomenon of young people either boomeranging back or never leaving has grown like topsy. What exactly is an accordion family? An accordion family, the reason I use the accordion term is to capture this sense of expansion and contraction, that the family's not a stable group, it's sort of moving in and out. But primarily I mean multi-generational households with working or non-working young adults and their parents. So the accordion is being pulled out. It's being pulled out and especially it's being pulled in the younger direction. We've had accordion families of a different kind in the past that stretch to incorporate the older generation. My grandfather lived with our family when I was a kid. Right. Uh, that is less the case now, so the accordion stretching in the other direction. And when you tie that together with the recession, which is making everyone so anxious about the economic future of rising generations, it's a recipe for panic in many cultures. The culture most alarmed, Japan's, which calls its boomerang kids parasite singles. The one featured in this TV show looks like he's pushing middle age. In Japan, it is provoking really almost hysterical reactions. Why? Well, because the Japanese view is that this is indicative of a damaged generation that's not taking its place, its orderly, correct place in the trajectory of life in Japan. When you ask why are your children at home, what you get is a highly moralistic explanation it's all about how these kids these days, they're not behaving properly, they have rejected our way of life, um, they don't seem to know how to grow up. No wonder there are such falling birth rates in these places. Right, below replacement fertility. The same thing is true in Spain and Italy, so all the countries where you have these accordion families are countries in which the birth rates have fallen through the floorboards. I actually stayed with an accordion family on a reporting trip to Spain in 2010. High youth unemployment meant that more than half of all 20 and 30-somethings were back home, including the son of my friend, journalist Jose Martinez Soler. Daughter Andrea, visiting her folks with some friends, explained. Most of our friends live in, in their parents' houses because they can't pay rent. Like your brother, living here? Yep, like my brother. Like his brothers. He has uh, four brothers, and three of them are still living with his parents. Really? which um, his oldest brother is 32, and he's still living with his parents. Unlike the Japanese, though, Spaniards have an economic explanation for their generation nini, ni estudian, ni trabajan, neither studying nor working. They will say, my child is still at home because the government liberalized contracts, rubbish contracts, that's the phrase they would use, rubbish contracts, that permitted short-term employment, part-time wages, and within less than a decade, a, a huge chunk of Spanish youth were found in those kinds of jobs, short-term, part-time. They couldn't earn enough money to own a home, and there's very little rental housing in countries like Spain and Italy. Newman's Accordion Family Project was actually launched in Italy when, in a conversation with a researcher there, Newman first learned 
that attitudes toward boomerang boys, bamboccioni, are culture specific. You know, we're just talking about our families. What do your kids do? What do my kids do? And she said, well, my son, he's 35, and, and I, you know, clean his room every day, and I take care of his laundry, and I was trying to control my reaction and say, gee, that's really interesting, rather than what I was thinking, which was, are you crazy? And she's a professional, I take it. Just like me, exactly. And I said, what's it like having your son at home at 35? And she said, well, why would he ever leave me? So in Italy, they're happy with accordion families. With Spain, they're not so happy. Japan, they're really unhappy. So what's the American attitude towards accordion families, boomerang kids? Complicated, ambivalent. Our view of whether this is a problem depends a lot on where we think these kids are headed. But where they're headed these days is impossible to predict. Evan Melillo had a BA in history as of June 2009. A job in town government, a town just north of Cape Cod, didn't pan out, so... I went on Craigslist and I looked up every tutoring, assistant teacher, subs, you know, anything with even remotely... I think I applied to um, a, a driving school. <laughs> um, and uh, so far I got uh, two emails back. Making just $72 a week, he'd moved back home, where his older brother had lived for years. In December 2010, he found steady work as a substitute teacher and is now also pursuing a graduate degree, all the while living at home. If your children come home and they're making tracks toward the future, then it seems like a very reasonable likelihood that they're going to be fine. Then families feel quite comfortable about it. But if it feels indefinite, if it's not clear it's going to work out, if their plans don't materialize, that sets off a wave of anxiety in American households, and we tend to make that nervousness rain down on them in the form of persistent questions. Did you, did you apply for jobs today? Did you look for that master's degree program and, and try to negotiate very delicately some form of parental oh. encouragement? Prod, a parental prod. There are some silver linings to this. If your child is not leaving home, then you're not becoming older. You might be biologically older, but sociologically, you're not. And when they're in your home, you don't treat them the same way. The surveillance, the anxiety, all that nasty stuff they had to do when yeah, they were teenagers. We did it like every night. Yeah, but we moved to that room in high school, I think. Did we? At the Schaefer's, parents Kenny and Leanne were mostly positive about their no longer empty nest. It's a pleasure, really, to have them around, even though it's more work and more, you know, mess and all that. Okay, this is ours and that's yours. The girls take? Even though my parents are cool, it's nice to live by yourself in an apartment and not kind of have to answer to anyone. And you can't sleep till two in the afternoon. Oh, I do that. But, um, <laughs> but I can't like, you know, I can't sit in my living room and drink with my friends until late into the night like I did in college. And that's okay. But you know, it's, I mean, this is like our family's home, so I can't just do whatever I want. I'm here indefinitely. There is this notion that you ought to be moving on in your life. Yeah, however, seeing that the job market isn't ideal, I'm not in a rush to find something to do to start my career. So until I figure that out, I'm not gonna do anything drastic. You look across these countries and you see that everywhere where there used to be long-term employment, this has shifted toward part-time contracts. It's easier to fire workers. The accordion family becomes the way in which we step up and try to cure all of the ills of the marketplace. And we make the best of it. And I think we actually deserve some pat on the back for doing so. It's an indication of the resilience of American families that we do so. But it has its limits. Both kids or two of your three kids? back home? Would you prefer them to be living on their own? If you ask me the same question in 10 years, yes, I might right. have a different answer. But right now, I well, like having them home a lot. If this reaches 28, if this reaches 30, and they still can't see their way to an independent future, I think we will start to draw the line and really worry in very profound ways about where the country is going. And in very many ways, I think that's exactly where we are right now. We're not sure where we're going economically, and what the future will hold for the next generation. Hey, who is sure about the future these days?